Hitmen, whether they're glorified or demeaned, always spark curiosity and fascinations. There are several movies and books that take up on the life of a hitman, and even games that are named so. But the reality is much more evil and darker than what the media portrays. Being a murderer is definitely something that is looked down upon, but for some, this could be their life of choice. With money being the motivation, the job of a hitman still doesn't seem to pay enough for the danger they put themselves in. The rapid rise of the illegal drug trade in the Central and South American regions also led to a rapid increase of related crime in the area, and so did the requirement of more hitmen to take care of their dirty businesses. In this video, we're going to know what it is to live a life as a hitman for the MS-13. The MS-13, short for Mara Salvatrucha, is a transnational criminal organization that originated in Los Angeles, California during the 1970s and 1980s. The initial members of the organization were those displaced and immigrated to the U.S. to escape the long and brutal civil war of El Salvador. What started as an attempt to protect the Salvadorian immigrants from other gangs in the Los Angeles area soon, like other armed gangs, turned into a ruthless and evil gang engaging in activities like murder, racketeering, extortion, drug trade, and so on. Mara Salvatrucha comes from the Caliche words Mara, which means gang and Salvatrucha, which is a combination of the two words Salvadorian and Trucha, meaning alert. The 13 refers to the position of the alphabet M. What originated in the United States soon spread to other regions, in the 1990s, there was a massive upsurge of gang-related crimes in the United States. This resulted in large-scale deportations of youth who were involved in gangs from the United States to the Central American regions. In fact, between 1996 and 2002, nearly 31,000 criminals were deported to Central America. El Salvador was in a desperate attempt to rise from the ashes. The Civil War had left the country in a state of ruins. The situation could not be any more perfect in order to take advantage of. The criminals who were deported used their previous experience and knowledge in order to lure the youth into the gang life. Moreover, they brought several low-level gangs into a more organized structure that are more violent in the actions and still have a stronghold in streets across Central America. MS-13 is the first and the only street gang which has been designated by the United States government as a transnational criminal organization. Even though the MS-13 originated in the U.S., they have more members outside of the country. Reports suggest that 10,000 MS-13 members inside the United States and around 50,000 members in other countries. The MS-13 is not subtle in their crimes. In fact, they're quite public about it. This seems to be their way of sending a message. Femicides are also quite common for the gang. Buses, which came from the wrong parts of town, have been burnt in broad daylight with the passengers still aboard. Now, let's take a look into the life of Juan, a hitman for this ruthless gang. Juan, who was a hitman, is now on the run as he may as well be on the receiving end of the hit job. Once a hunter, is now hunted. He joined when he was just 15 years old. The MS-13 usually recruits teenagers, especially those from the poorer sections of the society. The MS-13 does not seem to care about your age. Not only are many victims of their crimes minors, the majority of the suspects arrested for the killings attributed to the MS-13 are also minors. Juan, his initial crimes were acts of extortion. Later, he was promoted to a killer and was transferred to a different neighborhood where he had to monitor the area where they were dealing drugs. As he went up the ranks of the gang, the upper members saw him improving and gave him harder and more daring assignments. He was just 18 years old when he had his first kill. His primary mode of killing was by shooting them. Juan admitted to having killed three people so far. He had used a 9mm pistol and an AK rifle in order to commit these acts. Juan knew the reason as to why he was ordered to kill these people. Quite ironic, one would say. The reason why Juan was sent to kill them was because they wanted to leave the gang. Juan was not paid per kill. Killing did have incentives, but the hitmen were on salaries. Juan used to earn around 1,500 pesos a week. 1,500 pesos, as of November 2022, is just worth 76 US dollars. A minimum wage job for just five hours in California could make that much money. And Juan was killing people and putting himself at risk for this. The 1,500 pesos was to watch over the neighborhood. At times, he used to get orders to hit people. Upon completing the task, he would get the extra privileges. These included newer weapons, women, extra money, or even newer clothes. 
Juan says that he was very nervous the first time he had to take a life. He had to smoke and use substances to get over it. A thought kept lingering in his mind. What if it was me or my mom? But it was too late. Once you're in the gang, you are in the gang. You really don't have much of a say. If you don't do the task, you may as well be the one that's on the receiving end. You have to do what the gang says. No questions asked. Juan says that if you disobey any orders, you would get punished. Not really surprising. He says that if you cannot complete the mission on the first time, you would get beaten up. He further adds that the beating would go on for 13 seconds. You get kicked, punched, and stomped while you're on the floor. It definitely felt longer than 13 seconds, but it still feels much lesser than what we would expect from a gang known for their brutality. The second time, they come equipped with weapons. They use baseball bats and try their best at smashing your ribs. And the third time, not surprisingly, it is strike three. You lost all your chances. You cannot be further excused. They kill you. Once, Juan had to witness the dismemberment of a threat to the gang. He said the body was cut and chopped into 13 different pieces and put inside a box. That's a symbol for the MS-13. Often, the MS-13 would kidnap people that contain information. Using torture and other methods of interrogation, they would obtain whatever they need from these people. Then they proceed to cut these people up into 13 pieces. Juan says he still remembers the screams of the people that were chopped up. He says this was a way for the gang to send a message to the people that the MS-13 is still around and in all neighborhoods, and that they are the most organized gang in the entirety of Honduras and Central America. Juan says that he never killed anyone by cutting them into pieces. He adds on that he never dared to do such a cruel act. It did not take Juan long to realize that this life wasn't for him. He started sensing that if he goes down this road, he is going to get himself killed or end up being locked up in prison for the rest of his life. The neighborhood he was in was in a very tense situation. He then admitted the main reason for making the decision to leave the gang, who was soon going to be a father. He did this for his son. To leave the gang, he had to leave almost everything behind. He fled the country in order to be free from his gang. He says there are only two ways to be free from the gang. You either join the church or you leave the country. But once you commit yourself to the gang, there's no way out. Juan is pretty confident that if he goes back to Honduras, the MS-13 will torture him and chop him up into several pieces. Juan hasn't even thought of going to the authorities in Honduras. The government itself is an organized gang. They bribe the people and the police. The police are on the payroll of the gang and sell you out. Juan is trying his best to live a normal life. He wants to work and make an honest living. Set himself as an example to his kids. He doesn't want to bother other people and not make the same mistakes that he made before. Juan says that even though he regrets what he had done before, he had to do what he did. There was no other option in order to survive in the streets of Honduras. With the drugs and crime around, he had to pick up the gun. With crime rates only increasing, we are left to wonder how much worse things could possibly get. Would there be more people who are able to turn their lives around like Juan and contribute towards a better society? Or are things only going to get worse? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more interesting crime stories.